Good morning, all. Anyone watching this in the review? Hello. So I'm not quite set up yet. The meeting went late this morning, so I'm a little behind. I'd like to preface this build by saying that this is not how it's normally done. Uh, I'm building something in a way that I don't know if it's even going to work. So we're going to find out. Whatever happens, it'll be interesting. Jake, how are we all? So, we're doing something a bit different to your average forge build, and I'm not sure that this is going to work, so don't copy me. <laughs> give, give it a couple months. <clears throat> hey, William, how you going? We're going to be building a post box forge, but I'm going to be rolling up my own, funnily enough. Anyone who smokes, you know, I'm gonna be making, I'm gonna be making a rolly. Aaron Finn, how are we going? Same old, same old. Isn't that always the story? Right. So, I've got the shits with uh, trying to find a forge body, and given that all of the scrap yards at the moment are closed because of COVID, and I don't want to cut up one of my good gas tanks. Um, <laughs> hey Andrew, hey Aaron, hello Aaron Finn, yep, and Aaron Dennis, two Aarons, alright, so, um, I'm going to be building my own, uh, based off an idea that my dad gave me, funnily enough, this is a piece of roofing sheet, that, uh, morning, evening, <laughs> your proof but not necessarily indoors. <laughs> morning evening blue nose, morning evening white lady. So the general idea is to make a forge body. We can all see where I'm going with this, I hope. Should be quite interesting. It is quite, uh, quite large, round. Eh, it should be fine. Maybe I'll cross it more than that. Get some overlap going. Yeah, there we go. That's better. I like that. I like that. So it's going to look very unique, which I kind of like. I like the idea of a unique looking forge. Because, you know, uniqueness is kind of what we're into. But, it's not been done before. And I can see some issues. Especially given that I don't have all of the materials I believe I need, but we're going to make do. First off, piece of roofing sheet. Now, this is galvanized. Um, but, being that it's going to be the body and it's going to be encased inside with refractory, I don't think the galvanization is going to be a problem. If anything, it'll just kind of sit there and do nothing. Um, it'll never get hot enough for the galve to burn which means that I'm not going to be suffering any zinc fumes, which is good, because <laughs> zinc fumes are bad. Um, but if I could, I would use something like Cold Bond, which isn't galvanized, it's just painted. Um, <clears throat> but, <coughs> excuse me while I die. <laughs> what in sand blazes? Hey Roy, how are you going? We are building a forge out of roofing tin. Or at least that is the aim. We shall see if my hairbrain scheme works. First, I want to get an idea of the height that I want. We need some form of ruling device. The cut is incredibly angry. Do I roll it and then cut it with the angle grinder or do I just I think rolling it and cutting it is going to be the easiest. Okay, we're going to roll it up, we're going to screw it together, and then we're going to 
go from there. So we're going to create the body. And this is basically a no weld, um, no weld body. Nice to see you, Roy. Sorry I haven't managed to make your live streams. They tend to be when I'm asleep, so um, doesn't work out for me so well. Okay. Now I'm doing this unsupported, which is probably not the smartest idea. But it's only thin sheet, so we should be okay. <laughs> are built to hold sheet together but we're fast to get out. Alright, it's fine. I should have clamped these two sheets together before I did this. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm planning to do, Aaron. <laughs> Everything is zip ties and gaff tape. So I'm going to pre-drill like I should. Have. Two and a half mil drill, just as a marker just to get the tech through its through to bite. Oh, you monkey. Right. Bring out big guns. A big clamps, that is. Sponsored, but I wouldn't mind them. I'm going to 
put a screw in it because on my luck. And again, I'm not even pretending to know what I do. I know what I'm doing, so um, don't worry about that. So now I have the screw in it, I can measure off. From about an inch above the head of the screw. How tall do I want it? Thinking 14 inches is what I want. Thank you to uh, uh, Alex from Bell and Ironworks for suggesting these chalk collars. They are incredible. And if we're doing 14 inches, then that means I can scribe. I want, want a screw every three inches or so, four inches. screw in each one as I go because the underside wants to wander quite a bit. So you guys, you guys are going to be learning along with me because this is something that I've never seen done. Don't even know if it's possible. Don't even know if it's smart. Probably not smart, but you're not here for smart. I come here to lay up. tight because they're only trying to stop shear stress. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm missing out on stuff. 
Every invention starts with a harebrained scheme. Yes, this is true. Hey, Daniel, you're not that late. I was late. This is one of the replacements. Yes, these chalk holders are amazing. Hey, Matt Wyeth, how are we going? Ben Toom, Sean Pittard. I think I already said hi to Bob. I'm thinking Roy's still here. 13 Hammers. Joel S. I got your, we got your email at the Forgecast, man. We'll talk about that in one of the next ones. Cool, so... <clears throat> Yeah, so they're commonly known as postbox forges or Don Fog style forges. This one is going to be a relatively small bodied one. Uh, as we can see, that's about the size of the body. But it's going to have two inches of refractor in it, so the, the actual forge area is going to be quite uh, narrow. Uh, so at the current moment, I'll go land to land for uh, my rifle buddies in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, land to land were about nine and a half inches, which means that once we put the two inches of refractory in, we're going to lose four inches. So the center of the forge is going to be five inches, um, five inches in diameter. So not not a huge forge body, but that's good because we want to isolate that heat as much as we can. Um, we'll have a door here and a door here. You know, uh, relatively small-ish doors, probably about an uh, inch and a half by three inch or somewhere around there. We'll figure it out as we go. But for now, we need to mark the height. Now, I don't have a height gauge, and even if I did, I wouldn't have a height gauge capable of doing something this tall. What I do have is a pencil and a ruler. Let's say 16. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be about 16 inches. So what we're gonna do is give myself a rough guideline. Up a rough guide line to cut to. Hey, Fred Bergman, how you doing? No, you don't need a huge board body for knife making. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This I'm looking to make small Damascus billets and work on knives with this forge. Um, this is going to be one of a few, one of three. Uh, the other one's going to be a quite a bit larger for bigger forge billets, for bigger. Uh, Billets. Hey Aaron A, how are we going? So we've got Aaron Dennis, Aaron Finn, and Aaron A. <laughs> so many Aarons. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this one should be uh, very economical. It'll be running the Gamaco small burner. running the Gamaco small burner, which compared to the size of this forge is quite large, which is good because that means that it's going to be very economical. I actually have a couple of other forge burners that I could use, uh, should that one be a little bit too extreme. Now, I need to take an angle out of this and cut it. <clears throat> Uh, might trim that, but we'll cut the bottom first. Looks pretty level. So we'll cut this, then we'll mark that out, and then we'll cut that, and then we should um, should be fine. I'm actually considering I might just put. I don't have any more text. Let me go get more some more text.
running out of text to seal from that uh, garden bed. <laughs> More text. I'm just going to throw a tech in here, just to stop that from springing apart while I cut it. This thing's springing open. Ah, mongrel. Things springing open on you when you're cutting them with an angle grinder isn't good. Right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for checking in, mate. <laughs> See you later, Aaron, eh? PPE time. Caitlin will be uh, <clears throat> proud of me. Alright, so I'm just going to flip the camera around here. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. Cut this. Hmm. 
Mm. So I'll build the floor up. Hmm. I'm kind of making this up as I go, so sorry if I have pauses in my stream of thought. That does seem overly tall. Shift this down here. Yeah. I think I'm going to shorten it <clears throat> just a little bit. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. I'm going to try tacking straight into the body. Feeling that, I think it needs to be just a tiny baby touch shorter. Better to have too much than not enough. But I'm thinking if I cut it there, y'all, it's always two inches about there. That makes sense, right? I'm not crazy, am I? I make baby scrolls, totally. I'll need the height. Yeah, uh, maybe. Hmm. It's a five inch diameter. Is it all going to get updated? Yeah, okay. I'm going to leave it this height. I'm going to leave it at this height and then we'll reconvene if we need to. <laughs> yeah, Ben, that's, that's right. That's, that's, that's exactly right. You guys have fun with that. All right. So now I need to make a top. For that, I have more roofing sheet. Now you think you might think this is going to create a lot of gap, but I'm going to make it not have gap by uh, putting a rim on it. But first, I need a cup top. For the bottom, I'm actually thinking I'm going to build this onto a plate of steel, which I don't have. A big enough plate of steel. Ooh. Let me just check. Fucking those out. What's this gonna look like? <laughs> How's that? Perfect fit. All right. So there's my forge floor. I love it when a plan comes together. Hey, I eat. How you going? Hello from Alaska. Well, hello from Australia. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the forge top. This is the forge floor. Now I want the top to be removable, so that's why I'm going to put this on it. Grab my pencil. There's no rhyme or reason for this. Just roughly trace. Make 
gives me forge top. And now I can use snips. Um, snip off the excess. How many outlets do you have in your manual forging area? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm getting four more. <laughs> Ben's house for dinner? Sounds good. Alright, I'm gonna quickly slice this up with the angle grinder. See you, Joel. Thanks for checking in, bud. I wish I wish you could, Wayne, but at the moment, uh... Hey, Dog Moon, how are we going? Uh, unfortunately, if I move the camera over that side of the workshop, it uh, just shuts off, because uh, my internet sucks. We have the 2x72 set up. Ready to rock. I'm going to move you over so you might be able to see what I'm doing. But basically, all I'm going to be doing is truing up the circle with the 2x72. And not.
Well, that was strange. Okay. Apparently, I need a new belt. <laughs> Good way to make narrow belts. Hey, Fox Run, how are we going? Okay, no worries, mate. You can leave the patron. That's fine. My current um, shop dimensions... Yes, I do need a, a range extension. My current shop dimensions are... Uh, it's 5.8 meters by 4.3, I think. Hey, Dylan, how are we going? <laughs> Alright, Roy, thanks for checking in, buddy. I appreciate it, mate. Okay, so I've made this into a circle to make the top form a forge. Move the camera over a bit. Circle. Forge, top. You get the idea. Might need to, might need to uh, flatten out some of the ridging just to make it a little bit more uh, usable. Or a rubber mallet. Rubber mallet with table. Apologies to any headphone users in the group. But that's going to about do it. need to be perfect. Just needs to be close. Hey Alex, how are we going? So here we are. The rough forge body.
Beautiful. Right, now we need to make an edging for that lid. And that's where this comes in. I'm just going to quickly snip it off so that I've got a length. Probably. I'm going to cut it short. Can you tell I'm not a sheet one worker? Strip this down to make it firm a bit. Before we do that, let's get the length. <laughs> Don't mind a little bit of overlap, so I'm not worried about getting it super accurate. It's longer than that. Well, you know what that means. It means we need a longer ruler from the screws. Now there is an easier way to do this. Pi times the radius squared is. Um, was it pi r? Pi r for circumference, pi r squared for area? I don't know. Someone want to do that for me? Pi r? Let's see if I'm right. So, groove to groove is, uh, say, 27 centimeters. 27 centimeters. Okay, pi r2, that's right. So 27 centimeters uh, diameter, so pi 3.14 times 27. Someone do that. String needs math every time. Yeah, <laughs> not not always. Pi around, pi is uh, around normally. Yes, it's true. So what's three point one four one five two something? Whatever. Anyway, I can only remember the first three digits of pi. Uh, what's so? What is the pi d of twenty seven? Add two inches for overlap. But first you need to do the pi D. Which is 27 times 3.1415 blah 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 blah. 27 centimeters. Pi half reading. Yeah, well, that's true. Although some pies aren't very edible. Uh, 
Hey, no, no, how you going? Man, it takes you guys a long time to do one math problem. I can't do it in my head. Yeah, I would do it on my phone, but you guys are on my phone, so I have to ask you guys. I don't have Siri. <sighs> 84.78. Yeah, so I was pretty close. Excellent. Thank you very much. 169.56. Think you did something wrong there, Hola. Ah, uh, you you timed the diameter by two, uh, is what went wrong there. But that's cool. All right, 84.78. Sweet. Um, and I'm going to add 50 mil to that, so five centimeters to that, so 89 centimeters ish. 90 centimeters. 90 centimeters of this material. Go from the square cut side because, you know, use the side that's actually done properly. Thanks to Andy's organizer, which I've actually labeled Andy's organizer, I have everything within reach. Still using math every day. Well, I mean, I use math every day. It's just that I can't do 3.1415 tune. I think it's 29. I can't remember. Uh, I used to know like 70 bit for pi, but only. This, I'm going to go over the uh, angle grinder again. Angle grind is easy. Now I'm just going to strip that down with the angle grinder. Hey Monica, how you going? Oh, I love coil spring straightening. Everyone knows how much I love coil spring.
you can get spring steel and round stock. That's what coil springs are. <laughs> coil spring from a train car. Well, you've seen my spring seat, right? start forming this because it's sheet steel it's not difficult to form thankfully just watching my back now some of you might wonder why is he not using pop rivets well if I was to use pop rivets then I would uh, incur the wrath of the potentially melting pot rivets. <laughs> because pot rivets are aluminium. Clamp it both sides and put a screw in the middle and then we'll shift one clamp. Plus we're kind of going for an aesthetic at this point. There's a certain aesthetic to this. It's very outback shed kind of aesthetic. Or at least that's what I'll tell myself. straight in. Maybe not. Depends on how blunt your techs are. Pretty bloody blunt is the answer. and reused, so I'm not surprised. Vortex should do the job. You're holding that in place. Now I just gotta form it around until it's a rough circle. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfect. Wish I could get to my anvil right now. Oh, hello, I see clapping. Thank you, James. I really appreciate it, bud.
Hope you're not asking me if I've got a power hammer yet. Because the answer will be no. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to need my anvil for this build, but looks like I do. That's okay. I can take my ear defenders off. I'm just going to use the horn to panel base this into shape. plan comes together. Look at this. And perfect. What I like to see. Okay. Alas and a lack. The lid does not entirely fit. But that's okay, because we can make minor adjustments using the drum. Quarter 
to the roof to account for making some cuts. Ed, thank you, man. You don't need to make up for that, that though. I appreciate it. I really do, but um, yeah, no, you don't have to worry about not making my streams. But I do appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut at an angle. I learned this in hat making of all things, probably enough. Yes, hat making. My hat making teacher taught me how to band a hat. And you need to do this to band a hat. And so all I'm going to do is at blade length, or just over blade length, I'm going to cut triangles like that all the way around. And what that will allow me to do is bend the tabs in and screw through the tab into the uh, into the lid. So blade depth beyond blade depth. Need to steepen the angle on this one. You don't want to make the tabs too big. You don't also don't want to make them too small. Um, there's a, a fine line that you have to kind of hold to. Wow, I wish I had better snips. I'm just going to quickly sharpen these. Sweet. Okay. I'm getting ever deeper with my cuts. Probably not a good time. try and keep the angles cuts, uh, the angles of the cuts relatively uh, even in angle. Uh, yeah, I, I know that I could just cut straight down and they would overlap, but the thing is, is that if they overlap, it's going to make it harder for me to screw into. Um, So yes, you could just cut straight down, and I have done that on previous jobs, but for this specific job, I want individual tabs that I can screw to. So thank you. This is more time consuming, I understand, and I apologize that you have to sit through me cutting tin like this. 
but I'll be working in. I'm actually over lodging tabs a little bit. Try and speed things up. It's not gonna be pretty. I'm actually thinking I might. No, I can't. I was about to say I might put the tabs on the inside and screw to them there, but I can't do that. I have to do the tabs on the outside. Snips suck. The reason I wasn't using these before is because they're angled cutters, so they push material out of the way. But Needs must, as they say. Whew. Angle grinder, yeah, I, <laughs> I would, but it's actually more controllable this way. I know it's boring, I'm sorry. I'm working as fast as I can without trying to cut myself. No sense in Russian. I mean, there's no sense in English either, but me speaking Russian wouldn't help. Paruski. Okay. That's the last tab that I can cut. Because that's a double. Oh boy. Alright, so. In order to get this done, I need to put this in. It should be made easier by the tabs. Now I need to bend the tabs in. You can see where I'm going. Tabs are bent in. The roof comes up to meet it. And now I can screw to the tabs. Or at least a couple of them. All I need is a support, which that is. Big support. I'm going to try tacking straight through the tab just to stabilize. See what I'm doing? Sorry, I don't have a camera guy, so I'm kind of trying to fill both rolls myself. Oh, 
Jesus. Hello. No, it's not Jesus. What is that? It is another godly figure. It is my father. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How you doing? Good. What are you making? I'm making a forge. Ah. Yeah. So you took my idea. I did. Here you go. <clears throat> ah. You screw us. Yes, new screwdrivers for my new grinder, which uh, my dad was kind enough to purchase for me, so that he could take the old one. <laughs> <laughs> my old one. Yeah, your old one. That's it. So you've heard me talk about my dad on my channel quite a bit. This is Dan. Hey. He's the one who built Preston. These might need a sharpener too. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Both of them. <laughs> I don't know, but with these ones, these ones, crap, I actually sharpened them, but they, yeah. Oh, they're not. They're Chinese. Crap. Yeah, Chinese ripoff. The whisk ones. Look at that. That's my market. Aha. Excellent. Yeah. Running. Excellent. Yeah, and Dad was the one who gave me this idea. I did say that earlier in the stream, but uh, there's confirmation for you. Genius. Yeah, he is genius. Yeah, he's also the one that helped build the um, build the tool caddy. He and I designed that together. I mean, you know, it's mostly based on his design, but yeah. it's a refurbishment that I'm doing for a customer. It's a army issue survival knife from the Vietnam era. Okay. It was uh, in a fire. All right. I'll leave you to your with all species, your activities. No worries. You're all set. <laughs> Thank you very much. No worries. Oh, I pulled that extra bit flashy. Oh, excellent. Um, and we'll do the power outlets at some point. Have you got those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got them. Uh, and I've got the cable, so maybe later on today. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> this is this is what I'm doing today. All uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Building a forge. I didn't bring my keys in, did I? Uh, don't recall you bringing your keys. Uh, I might have. Uh, I'll get back to the car. And go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go. Thank you very much. The what? Oh, I backed into a um, trolley bay. Ah. One of those, the, the, I couldn't see it through the window. Oh, no, and it just popped. It's just a... Yeah. Yeah. You ordered a new one? Uh, they don't make them anymore. So I've got a... Oh, the wreckers. Yeah, that's, I've been calling around. We'll, we'll find out. Is there anything I can add to sodium duplicate? I'm not sure about that one. Hey, cat, how you going? <laughs> yes, so that was the man. You've all heard so much about. I need more tacks. I gotta go steal some more out of the garden.
Uh, well, I've got three tacks left. I've stolen all the steels I can steal. Hey, Curtis. Hey, Benny. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Box audio is card repaired. Yeah. It's, uh... It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a week of up, week of up and downs. Hey, Mr. Roberto, how are you going? Oh, it's all good, Ed. See you later, mate. Uh, I, yeah, I backed into a trolley, car, a trolley bay and uh, smashed out my rear tail light. And uh, unfortunately, they don't make that part for my car anymore. My car is now out of out of service. And unfortunately, with the uh, with the smash on there, can't really drive it. So kind of stuck at home. For the foreseeable, um, which has made building this forge rather interesting. It's one of the reasons, one of the other reasons why I've decided to try this specific forge design out, because uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to leave the house. Not from a metal worker. Oh, it's... I'm not sure what that question is about. It's a trolley bay, yeah. Make a new light fixture for the car. I wish. I wish. Fuck the things. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, I'm kind of shit out of luck when it comes to that. Let's see if Dad left that tray of, uh... Yeah, no, the way my car is made, there's no way I can make a decent fitting. I don't work with plastics or glass. You know, if I've chosen to do this build like a uh, week ago, there was a giant box of tech screws. Hey, Monica, thank you. Yeah, I wish. Uh, I, I live fairly close to a couple of. Pick apart stuff, but uh, unfortunately, I uh, can't drive there, so I can't pick up anything. Nothing. They're not within walking distance. Let's put it that way.
quite right where Ed, I was running away from your generosity. I don't think I have any in my screw jar either. need to be screwed all the way around this. Just my OCD ass wanting to have complete up a little bit when it's uh, finally done because it's going to have a couple of layers of ice wool in there and the screws will help hold that in which is nice. Might even put one in the centre. Right. With that being said, I believe we can get to the wool part. Now I'm actually not going to make the floor a fixture so that I can make this, I can make it removable. I don't have a stand for it at the moment, but it can set up here and that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything, it's not going to be in the way. Like that. So, now, uh, it's a Holden Adventure 2006. It's a Holden Adventurer. Holden no longer exists. They shut down their last factory. you who know 
Yeah, well, it's an Australian, Australian brand. I saw. Yay! I can hear the cheering from here. I believe uh, Chevy took over Holden over there. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Vauxhall is Holden, well, it used to be. Uh, but Vauxhall don't exist in Australia. Vauxhall is rebranded Holden, just UK version. Ceramic fiber blanket. Always use a respirator. Box of cancer indeed. Mesothelioma in a box. So this is only a half roll, but I think it's going to do me. At least for this board. I didn't have breakfast, so I'm having a quick one. Yes, I would have been putting a coating. Uh, I have this, which is a ITC 100 rigidizer. And I'll also be laying, uh, laying on a layer of seat mat. Compressed air. <laughs> You want a Malou? Well, good luck with that. You will I'll apologize for the chewing. Now. Now. Alright Sean, thanks mate. Thanks for checking in. You can always check back later. Um, some people will say that Rigidizer alone will do the job, but I like to do both because I am paranoid. Alright. This is only a half roll. Um, you can buy a full roll, but I just I bought a half roll because that's what they had. They didn't have a full roll. I'd love a Ute, but a Malou is fucking useless. That's a sports Ute. Sports Utes are the worst things to ever have been created. Sports Utes are a blight on humanity. <laughs> Alright. So my shop floor is down in all hell. So I'm going to quickly sweep up.
This is the other reason I'm wearing a respirator. Whew. <laughs> I don't have a Tesla. And if I did, I'd sell it to get a real car. All right. Super high density. It looks a lot lighter than it is. Okay. That has like a bullet of wood. Oh, I need to get rid of this. Anyway. The old white board is going to be my ear cutting board. There we go. How to get a pattern. I'm going to flip the camera around and give you a better view. I'm not going to be able to read your. Uh, Anthony, thanks mate. Uh, I'm going to flip the camera around. I won't be able to read your comments, but at least you'll be able to see what I'm doing a bit better. Cancer biscuits. This is the weirdest stuff to play with. Quickly cut a straight line. <sighs> Too fast for this shit. Circumference is 87, which is 600. Damn it. <sighs> I 
Okay, so I need to cut an 87 centimeter roll and then cut Out measurements in my head. I'm using, I'm using my one one hour knife. If anyone recognizes it, ah, God, I need. Should be. I need to. Ah, getting old. <laughs> now the correct part is that. Oh boy. And my respirator is flipping. put it in the box and that's the first
I think I'm going to go to breakfast out of this. Outside. It's not one centimeter thick, it's one inch thick. I'm just going to step outside where I'm less likely to pick up fibers so I can remove my mask for a second. Getting up and down when you're my weight. Got your ribbon burner done. Yeah, oh, the dies are done. <laughs> okay, so um, so now we've got a one-inch lining on the inside, but I want a two-inch lining. So the next lining is going to be 87. It's not 87 because it's. 87 minus 25 now it's 87 minus 50 so 87 minus 50 times pi so that's 37 times pi and that's 60 60 70 74 81 No, it's not Not 87, because 87 was the oh, I'm going to have to take that measurement again The fibers should have settled Current inside diameter is 95 centimeters. 95 centimeters minus 25 is 70. 70 times pi. 42, 10. Two ten. Like 210 and change, like 210, 15, 215, 216. Am I right? Yeah, 290. Cool. So I'm going to go for 210. Doesn't matter if I get a little bit of gap. Just so you stop worrying. <laughs> All right, 210 centimeters, 210 millimeters, I should say. We can do that. Go. All right, so, put you in this corner. Oh, we've only been going for two hours. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to flip you around again. So you get a bit of view. Oh, camera. All right. Good 
Okay, so we halved that, so it's actually 54. Mongrel. Tell you what, it's gonna work out. Okay, now I need a couple of circles. About five inches in diameter.
Now I can bring it over here. Turn the camera around. So, you'll notice. Huh. Cheers, Monica. See you, Paul. Okay, so you'll notice I haven't cut the doors or anything yet. That's by design. And this should always make your arms itch. Hey, turn blue. Okay, so I have got a forge door. One does not simply walk into forge door. All right, all right. Now I have a hole saw. That's the right size from the burner. So the hole saw problem is fine. I can put that wherever I want it. Well, I don't want to have forge doors. And given the internal diameter of this forge, I'm thinking. See ya, dog bone. Thanks for checking in, mate. Alrighty. Oh, this is marked. Okay. So I want my forge doors to be relatively small. about that big, maybe a bit taller. Yeah, that's about that big. That's all that wide. Which would mean on the opposite side, which is this side, we have a similar size door. How far from the top is that? That looks about right. Doesn't need to be super measured. <sighs> so, uh, That's awesome, Tonzo. Alright, I'm going to cut my forge doors with my angle grinder.
Good God. As you can see. Good God. But it's kind of occluded at the moment. That's where right. oh, the knife comes in again. One for door. Ah, 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 ah. And once the rigidizer is in place and the seat mat, and you're all done. Stuff is so weird, really, the press is really weird. But that's two forward doors. Forward doors, forward four. All complete. More half past five. Right. Feel that paintbrush, I think. <sighs> there you go. The size inside will be roughly six inches. Roughly. Alright, so now I've got that cut. All I need to drill do is drill the burner hole. I shall do now. I'm using the uh, cable drill for this one because it's a one horsepower drill rather than the 375 watt that I've got. Apparently. I'm going to go. Close to the floor. Fucking blunt of buggery, alright. Two seconds. Just gotta sharpen my uh, drill bit. Being able to sharpen drill bits is an incredibly important skill. One that should not be overlooked. Screw pencils in. Okay.
Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna do a dodgy. I'm doing a dodgy. I'm doing the typical Australian thing. problem Matt it's the fact that the uh, hole cutting saw was a wood cutting bit and it just blunted the hell out of it right angle grinder community is making a plate uh, probably out of that same flashing and I'll, uh, I'll affix a, uh, a pipe holder, pipe fitting bit. But for now, the burner fits and it sits. <laughs> I do love bulking it up sometimes. Reminds me that I'm human. Alright. So now we've bulked, bulked the uh, burner holes. We've done all that. Now, 
I need to rigidize everything. Now I've been told that this stuff is way too thick to apply just on its own. Now we get to paint it purple. get a container for this because it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Pour some of this rigidizer in here just to uh, make it a bit easier. I put in, it's about a 50 50 mix of ITC 100 and water. Now, I don't have to be super anal about this because I am going to be coating it in a layer of refractory cement as well. But this will hold, this will make it hold its shape a lot better. Even though it's purple when it goes down, it's uh, it dries clear, so don't get too freaked out by this color.
And this stuff just laps it up. The doors are the most important part. Oh no, fuck! 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 Oh, that was an expensive mistake. Oh, that was just expensive. God fucking damn it. I apologize for the language. Semi rigidized this fucking forge floor. God damn it! Just enough. Just enough. Fucking <sighs> bollocks.
Apologies for the uh, <laughs> apologies for the tiring. That sucked. Forward four is dirty as hell. It's all right. It's going to get coated in a nice thick layer of soap now. Oh, Lux! Yeah, I just have enough to quickly turn the roof of the forge. In a very thin manner. at this point so masks off And that can now dry. Just going to quickly go around and mash the walls down. Make sure it's all fitted properly into the forge body. Because then the ITC 100 will harden in place. And that's all she wrote for today, until the, uh, until the ITC 100 cures, that is the forge. The next step will be to uh, mix up some satanite, and um, I'm just going to quickly clean my hands, uh, mix up some satanite. and coat all the walls and the floor uh, in preparation for firing. That's what you get for not paying attention. It's all the broom's fault.
<laughs> yeah, that really, that really sucked. <laughs> that's, that's not cheap, uh, that stuff. Lesson learned, I was in too much of a rush, I wasn't paying attention. Same stuff I do every time. At least my table is going to be rigid now. <laughs> oh. Luckily, nothing electronic was harmed in the making. Did I cinch my beard up in the middle? No, no, it's just my, the way my beard naturally grows. Grows in two. Making a forge. Spray bottle next time. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I thought I could just paint it on, no issues, but uh, no, definitely spray bottle next time. Spray bottle. I'm gonna invest in one. But there's enough in there to rigidize all of the uh, all of the ice wool that's in there and the coat of satanite will hold down any fibers that don't um, stay put. It's funny because some people build their forge with just rigidizer and some people build their forge with just satanite. And they seem to have no problems. I just want to use both because I'm anal retentive and paranoid. Um, but yeah, so I think that bottle was like 50 bucks. That little 500 mil tub. Yeah, sorry, Paul, I wasn't answering your question because I was kind of in the middle of something. The advantage of a post box forge is that you have indirect heat at all times. So there is no direct flame on your work, which means that there is no hot spot. Um, the other advantage is because you're heating a secondary position inside the forge, so um, just to give you reference, there's the burner hole. And here is the forge entrance. So you're completely hanging in free air up the top. You get a full overheat because there's nothing in contact with the billet or the piece that you're working on. And you don't have any uh, direct flame from the forge burner on your work, which means that you are completely safe from over oxidizing your work. Um, the other advantage is that Normally when you're forge welding in a forge, the flux connects to the bottom and uh, you know, you can sit the, uh, sit the billet in the flux and that tends to create all kinds of problems when you're forging on stuff later. Um, it tends to stick to the billet or stick to the piece you're working on and uh, cause cold shuts and you know, nastiness. Uh, so, uh, the main deal is that it doesn't contact anything inside the forge, so there's no heat sink, there's no direct contact with borax, and you've got indirect contact with flames, so therefore there's no uneven heats. You get a perfectly even heat every time. Um, so it's mostly for forge welding. It's also good for working on single bars. See you, Lucas. It's also good for working on stuff that's attached to a bar, if you're attaching it to uh, like a... a um, piece of Rio or something like that. Uh, Kyle Royer only uses this Dival Forge uh, for his work, um, as you may notice. Um, yeah, it, it has its advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage is that it's very fuel efficient, very even heats, very good for forge welding because the borax doesn't interrupt with anything inside the forge. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a really nice welding forge. Don Fogg, I believe, was the first to develop this style of forge, and that's why it's called the normally called the Don Fogg style forge. But uh, recently, it's been called the Postbox style forge. Niels Vandenberg from from, um, uh, from Black Dragon Forge. He makes Postbox forges, Black Dragon forges. Funnily enough, um, the things they're not good at is working small material. Um, 
and working anything that requires it to sit inside the forge. So, um, like hammer billets, you can't put a hammer billet in there because it will just drop to the bottom of the forge. Um, <clears throat> so this is one of maybe two. I'm not actually. I'm. I'm. This is kind of a middle size from what I was thinking. This is not quite as big as the biggest one I was planning on making, and it's not as small as the smallest one I was thinking of making. So I might actually end up just using this one and forgetting the other two. We'll see. Yeah. I'm kind of uh, intrigued to see how this runs. Um, this was not the original plan, funnily enough. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, I may build a big one in the future, but... Uh, I'm also going to build a lay-down uh, pass-through forge, probably out of a 9-kilo gas bottle. Uh, when the scrapyards open up again, this stuff makes you itch like crazy. Um, I'm going to wash my hands pretty thoroughly when I get inside. <sighs> it's a pretty cool little uh, pretty cool little forge. I'm looking forward to running it. Uh, I think it's cool that it looks very uh, unique. Uh, it's the, the roof sheet crenellations. Make it look pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm enjoying the unique styling of the forge, if you will. Um, yeah, I don't know, I kind of like it. So yeah, as I said, next stage is uh, let this stuff dry, probably for 24 hours, probably a little bit more, because it's winter. Uh, and then while it's still moist-ish, I will apply a layer of satanite. Um... And then I'll let that dry for about 48 hours, and then I'll fire it. And uh, I'll probably do the first lighting on a, on a stream at some point, too. Um, but yeah, I will be building another forge in the near future. Need to buy some more rigidizer. Because I'm out. <laughs> Funny that. When you spill half of it across the friggin' table... <laughs> that was very unfortunate. Anyway, but I did manage to get enough on the uh, the roof that I'm comfortable to just coat that in satanite. It does hold itself in. Um, if need be, I'll put some pins in it. But I don't think I'd need to. Um, you can convert this into a, a um, into a smelting forge if you really want to um, have two lids one closed lid and one with a hole in it uh, and then have the ability to block off the doors and the one with a hole in it you can just you know put stuff in I may actually end up mounting a handle onto this onto this lid so that I can remove it the advantage of a removable lid means that I can do repairs without having to cut the piece off and stuff like that Thank you very much, 13 Hammers. Thank you for checking out. Thank you to everyone who donated uh, while watching the stream. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing more behind-the-scenes stuff, I will be doing some more behind-the-scenes stuff for my patrons. I'm doing a class for them currently, uh, forging a full-tank hunter, going in-depth into how to do that. Uh, I'll actually be working on that after I jump off stream, probably, after I've had some lunch. It's almost lunchtime. Yeah, it's past lunchtime. Um, <laughs> but with that being said, I hope you have a fantastic week. Uh, this is my Wednesday video, sadly. Um, I, I didn't have time to film anything, but I will be doing a uh, I will be doing a video on Friday-ish around there. Uh, a little bit of a rant video. I've got a rant to do. I've got a couple of rants to do, but we'll we'll get that. But. Uh, yeah, thank you for following along. This was an idea from one of the uh, guys on my stream, so if you do have ideas from uh, for me to do stuff, send them through to me, samtownsbladesmith at gmail.com, or you can contact me through Instagram or Facebook at samtownsbladesmith. Uh, send me three recommendations. The, don't forget to listen to the Forgecast, um, which, thanks to my patrons, now has a fantastic new microphone. Um, I now have a Blue Yeti uh, podcast recording microphone, so the Forgecast is getting an improvement. Next week's, uh, well, this week's Forgecast episode is going to be spectacular. So, keep an eye out for that, uh, and have fun. Make some stuff. Be good to one another. 
all the good stuff. You know, all the cliche shit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.